we've received a question on how to make injection molded part tooling in Alibre. This of course would be the cavity and core for an injection molded part. So let's talk about uh, some techniques for basic and more complex injection molded parts. I'll start off by saying this is intended for uh, injection molded parts that have cavity and core tooling. For any fancy features like slides, these techniques could be helpful, but uh, due to the custom nature and complexity, you're kind of going to have to make your own solution if you're going with something for slides. But for uh, basic core and cavities, which are about 70 to 80 percent of all injection molded parts, we will use these following techniques. Uh, here I have a toy blaster handle that has been designed with injection molding in mind. And uh, how might we generate the core and cavity for this? Well, let's first open a new part. And I'm going to activate a sketch here. I'll do so on my XY plane. Let's go with a center rectangle. I'll make sure that these two are equal. We'll give this a dimension of 9. And we'll make sure that one of these is vertical. So we're fully constrained. So we have a 9 by 9 center rectangle. We'll deactivate the sketch. And I'll extrude that something like 2.5. Next, we'll go with Boolean subtract. And Alibre asked me to insert a file, which I'll choose my part I've intended to injection mold. And I'll stick one of them down. Next, I'll add some constraints, just like we would in the assembly environment. And I'll choose my parting line and stick my parting line right on the edge here. Or you can choose uh, the best way to arrange your parting line as needed. I'll choose here and here, and we'll give this an angle, and I'll go with zero. Now, I can position this as needed within my tool, but we'll say that this is good. I'll commit the uh, subtract. And now, due to the nature of this part, we have some distinct things. We can delete our, one of our model pieces and see that we have created some mold tooling as our core. I can also edit and choose the cavity. Again, maybe some fine tuning uh, would be needed for some threaded uh, components or additional considerations for holes, but these that can probably be comfortably done uh, editing our tooling here. So we have a core and cavity that we can change as we please. But there are more complex parts that I also want to go through. Let's talk about those. Let's say that we have a stool here, and I have made this with the intent of injection molding with drafted ribs and a drafted body and all that. And we've employed a technique here, like a, a cut with draft handle. And we also have some material uh, removed down here. Let's say that I again intend my parting line to be right here. What uh, problems might this present? Well, I'll start a new file and try to proceed as before. And again, We'll make a center rectangle. And I'll make it 15 by 15. And we'll choose an equal. And I'll make a horizontal constraint there. Perfect. And so we're fully constrained. We'll extrude. We'll go mid plane, another 15. And then I'll choose my Boolean subtract. I'll align the part within my tooling. And when I commit the subtract, 
hopefully you can see the problem. Those features make it so that it's all steel one part. It doesn't give us a core and it doesn't give us a cavity. So let's talk through making a core and cavity for a part like this. I'll mention here that uh, Ex Machina is a great YouTube channel that uploads a lot of Libre content. And one thing I noticed is Ex Machina does a lot of Booleans. And so this technique is inspired a lot by Ex Machina's playbook. Let's take a look at what Booleans can do for us. So first off, when I, I'll go to my production part and I'll do a save as. And we're going to call this something that denotes it's intended for a boolean, maybe stool for boolean. And then we can make a few changes. First off, we want to remove the features that prevent us from being able to generate a core and cavity when booleaned. So, I'll find my extrusion 4 and suppress the feature here. and I'll suppress this other cut. Excellent. Next, these handles also will cause the core to fuse with the cavity. So let's take care of that. I'll uh, go with remove face here. Of course, if you're using Atom, I think an extrude could work, but I think remove face is just a bit cleaner, a bit more straightforward in my opinion. Once I've selected the faces to remove, you can see that that is removed. We'll do the same over here. And we're able to remove those faces. Now we can see that uh, we have this here on the sides and I would suggest to not remove any features that we don't have to to keep the integrity of our mold. Finally, if our parting line is going to be this bottom face, then we'll need to add material in here. So I'll create a sketch on this face. And we'll project here with maintained association. and we'll extrude. I can even say to next to preserve my design intent. We'll do the same thing here. Activate a sketch. And extrude to next. Excellent. So we can finish up by mirroring, or we could have also projected these other faces to the sketches and extruded both at the same time. Each have their design intent pros and cons, and each is both probably pretty minor. All right, now we've got something that will for sure generate a core and a cavity when we Boolean it. So we're going to save this as stool for Boolean. And now let's start a new part. I again can generate my tooling. We'll make sure that we are equal. We'll make one horizontal and we'll give it a distance of 15. We'll extrude again a distance of 15. And you know what? I think for alignment reasons I want to make this mid plane so we'll go ahead and edit this and change it to not dual depth rather but mid plane. Next, we'll want to insert the part that we've just made that can generate our cavity and core. So we'll choose Boolean Subtract. And we'll choose our stool for Boolean, of course. We'll place one. And we'll want to be very careful about our alignment as that will come in handy in the future. So I'm going to click Show Reference Geometry. And we'll start adding constraints. So I'll take the reference XY plane and align it to this part's XY plane. 
I'll do the same thing, YZ to YZ. And then I can take the bottom parting line face of this and stick it right there. All right, with that being done, I can commit my cut. And now if we indeed have been able to uh, generate our core and cavity, I can go with remove model pieces and let's delete our core. And indeed, we have two separate pieces, so we can go ahead and save this as our cavity. File, save as. And we'll name this cavity. I can also edit my remove pieces. Clear all. Delete my cavity and I'm left with my core. And we can save this as our core file. I think that looks pretty cool with the hex pattern and all the ribs cut into it and everything. So we'll go ahead and do that. Uh, file, save as, and we'll save that as our core. Okay, the problem is we've lost our draft to cut handles. We've also lost the material that was removed from under the stool, right? Because we didn't use the uh, part, <clears throat> we didn't use our production part to make these changes. We used one that delivered us something that could actually produce a cavity and core. So how do we restore those features that were lost? Well, let's open up our other part. I'm gonna open up my stool for Boolean. I'm gonna do a save as. I'll just call it something that denotes that there are differences between uh, our production part and this one that was meant for booleans. Next, I'm going to go with a boolean subtract. And we're going to say stool for production. I'm going to stick that right on my origin point, and that should make sure that uh, it is properly aligned with the other stool. So we're going to go ahead and commit that subtract. And just like that, we were able to find the differences between the two, and this highlights the features that were lost. So we're going to save that. Now, some of these may be uh, features that you want to have on your cavity and some you may want to have on your core. I suggest again doing a remove model pieces and making a file of all these that would go on your core and saving it and then doing a save as for your cavity and save all that. I want all of these on my core so I'm going to skip that step. Next we go back to our core and let's go with a boolean unite. Now, inserting my differences file, I'll want to be careful and judicious about how I do this. We'll make sure that we uh, fuse these together in a way that we don't lose any um, dimensions or information or integrity. All right, so I aligned two axes. And I don't see any gaps or anything, so I think that we are well placed. You can probably also use uh, reference geometry as we've done before. So we'll go ahead and commit this unite. Just like that, now we have a core that has all of our missing features. But how does this fit together in an assembly? Let's save and start a new assembly. For my new assembly, I'll insert my cavity, my core, and my original stool. And I'll stick this right on the origin and finish. I'll take my cavity and make it anchored. And now I can arrange these in a meaningful way. Once again, I'll show reference geometry and align my planes. All right, now that I have all these aligned, we can see how that fits together. And I think that fits very well. 
So I'll go ahead and run a constraint from here to there so that they're exactly on top of each other. And now we'll choose inspect and uh, we'll choose interferences. We'll run a global check to see if there are any interferences between parts and none found. Next, I can take this and pack it in. And we'll again check for interferences. and no interferences found. Under inspect I also can say activate my XY and see that there aren't really any cavities or gaps either. So we were able to generate uh, pretty well fitting injection molded parts and we're able to do so uh, quite effectively. Now another thing is uh, this is able to generate the tooling but it's uh, up to you for best practices as well. For example, this face of the tooling will need to contact this face of the tooling when it goes in. And uh, you know, when you have those kinds of contacts, about five degrees of draft or more is best for extending the life of the injection mold tooling, right? So still follow best practices whenever you can. And a big thank you to Ex Machina, whose uh, use of Booleans has been quite inspiring for the community. Thank you all for watching. Hope this was helpful, and we'll see you in the next one.